All right, so Clyde, uh, can you share with us a little bit about uh, some things on your mind right now? Yeah, hey, thanks. It's great to see old friends and hopefully make some new ones. Clyde Tabor, Visual Story Network, Southern California. Tim and Hannah and I are part of a larger coalition called Media to Movements. And that is a relatively recent, like in the last five plus years, phenomenon in the missions community using media strategies to identify seekers and persons of peace. Most of the examples of this happening around the world, and there's, uh, I think, over 200 teams that are underway trying to build a strategy at some level from a, dozens of organizations. So it is, it is only owned by Jesus. It doesn't belong to any one entity or organization other than the kingdom of heaven. And we use media strategies. Most of the teams around the world are using social media strategies, but not exclusively. To There's a, like a very kind of an interesting and deliberate pattern that's found to be pretty successful in terms of identifying seekers and persons of peace. But the whole goal isn't just to have a social media strategy. It's to have a disciple making and a movement building strategy. So it doesn't. It doesn't suffice to simply get, generate a lot of contacts um, through a media campaign, but then there needs to be what we call a, a filter in the middle of a funnel, like finding out who are those people that are really earnest, who are who is sincere. Um, and then there's processes and patterns that have been kind of emerged to show these, these are workable and, and best practices. And then really doing the third part, which is transitioning those people into discipling relationships in, in church communities and mission teams and wherever that may be. And what it does is it has accelerated those who put this into practice, their ability to identify people who are interested in wherever their target audience may be. And so it could be, you know, women between the ages of 20 and 28 within five kilometers of Erbil, Iraq, you know, and you build a persona and, and you go for that. And it's amazing what can still happen. Um, so there's a growing global community around that. And this is just one of those um, kind of what little groups that meets in the community of practice that we wanna learn from one another, share best practices, give you some resources. And then the particular niche of this group is how do we hook up content providers, people who are either have content that they're willing to share or willing to create with new or existing teams who are focusing on this kind of a strategy. So anyway, we've been doing this. This will be our fourth one on a quarterly basis. And um, we're just happy to do that. So back to you, Tim. Thanks, Clyde. Um, yeah, so the rundown of what this is going to look like today is uh, I've invited a couple of people to speak about um, their aspects of ministry that will be relevant to what all of us do. So uh, can, can I ask if he is here yet? I don't see her name. Okay, well, maybe she'll show up soon. We also have Todd and Zach. Todd, uh, raise your hand. There he is. Okay. I don't see Zach here. Is, is Zach here at all? Zach Lighton. Okay. No worries. So um, what Todd does is uh, I, I just had a meeting with him like a week or two ago online and I knew, knew about his ministry for a while because I'm part of Reliant Creative now. Um, and so he has this thing called Story Drive, which is kind of a template-based ministry that helps Christians learn um, how do you tell a story, you know, if you're interviewing somebody and then even how do you have it set up so that you've got the nice backdrop and, um, you know, something simple that's going to work in pretty much anywhere in the world where you are. So um, I just got my, my black curtain and I just blacked out my windows in my studio. So I'm pretty excited to try to start giving that um, a go with some people here like refugees and, and churches that have stories to tell. Uh, here in the Portland area where I'm based in Oregon. Um, so we will wait for Yi Yi to show up um, and maybe Zach, but Todd, I'd like to turn it over to you for a few minutes um, so you could tell us about your ministry and 
Uh, I know that we've got a video to look at as well. So um, yeah, go ahead, man. Awesome, thank you. Do you have that video queued up by chance? I, I do, um, yeah, go ahead and start and I'll, I'll get it going here in a second. Okay, so yeah, I, I live in Atlanta, Georgia and about 10 years ago, I was sitting in my mega church and just, I couldn't get it out of my head. Like we have all this gear, every Christian has a story. Why is it that we capture so few stories? So I started just basically doing what I could as a business person, not a videographer or a creative and just started meeting people where they were at and saying, hey, if you'd be willing to tell your story, we'd like to walk with you, uh, help you remove the obstacles and the barriers that are in your heart or your head from keeping you from telling your story. And until we can find a church that has the capacity to capture your story, we'll, we'll do periodic story drives, like blood drives. So we've been doing that for 10 or, 10 or 11 years. My heart's really for the American church um that's kind of complacent and quiet and my heart is praying that god would break my heart for the lost and for the national mission field so hopefully through a group like this it would it would do that um our, as, as you might imagine our biggest bottleneck is always editing so we're looking at ways to build an ecosystem of uh cloud and crowd editors and transcription uh tech stack and, and things like that so i I'm, I'm as much of a connector and a kind of a connector to philanthropists and kind of innovators and visionaries that want to see the church work together uh in innovation efficiency collaboration to simply help more stories of god's love flow um so i'm, I'm here to help here to connect awesome. And uh, glad to be here, Tim. Thanks. Um, thanks, Todd. So we're going to be watching a 90 second video here. Uh, I'm going to optimize this for video along with sharing sound. So it should work for most of us. But if it does not, I have put the link into the chat window. It's a Vimeo link or you can find it at Story Drive. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and see if we can get this to work. 99% of Christians will never share their story in their lifetime using the tools of the age, namely video, the internet, and social networks. These aren't just statistics, these are real people in your church. And then you realize 99% of them will likely take their stories to their grave. They may never know their own hope in Christ, let alone share it with their children, their grandchildren, their neighbors, their coworkers, their friends. It doesn't have to be that way. We can unleash these stories for God's glory. We can help Christians become willing, able, and ready to tell their story wholeheartedly. We can mobilize and equip the next generation to capture and harvest these stories as worship with reverence as unto the Lord. By intentionally doing these two things, we will create regular and perpetual opportunities for people to share the reason for the hope they have using the tools of the age. These stories can then escape the walls of the church, be unleashed on social networks where real relational community takes place. We can harness the power of our testimonies and the social networks to reach more people in more places more often than at any other point in the history of the church but we're not even scratching the surface. And it can't just be more tech teams, video equipment, technology. This is a heart issue. It's a priority issue. But why should we care? Because stories were central to Jesus's ministry and to Paul's ministry. Imagine if the woman at the well or the man healed at the pool had never shared their stories. We will give an account for what we did with the testimonies and technology we've been entrusted with. And thank God it's not too late. We can do better in this generation. Story Drive is a collaborative initiative to help more Christians know and tell their story wholeheartedly using the tools of the age. For more information, please visit storydrive.com. All right, well done. Um, so that was a little focus on Story Drive. And um, Todd, I wanted to ask you, I'll do a little interview here. 
um, was the idea that you actually, like you mentioned the blood drive, are you going to like a certain city and you have churches come together uh, or do you have one church come and, and learn what this looks like to kind of train people and how to tell their story in an effective way on video? How does this look? Yeah, all the above. Th thanks so much for the opportunity to share that. <laughs> it's been like a 10 year prayer. It's like, God, am I the only one thinking about this stuff? So anyone that thinks that Story Drive is like this established organization that's going far fast, it's it's not. It's just a it's just a burden of my heart. And I got the domain like five years ago, and I've really been waiting for a community to just kind of give it to and be a part of it. But yeah, it's uh, you know, as a American, you know, fifty year old guy, I'm like, I know what a basketball ministry looks like, and I know what a what a, what a food bank looks like. I know what a pumpkin patch in a small town looks like where all the churches kind of work together. So I'm like, why not, why not a story drive? And the idea would be, you know, go into a city, uh, demonstrate it, love the folks, get folks interested and involved, say, hey, what can we do to help you stand up? Essentially a story ministry that would do periodic story drives, not just for your church, but for all the churches and all the community ministry partners. And then I, Zach, who's, I don't know if he's on the call yet, you know, he's got a much more of an international worldview. He's, he's got, I'm kind of like domestic discipleship. He's more like international. And we, I've just had this dream of like a, an American church standing up a story ministry and then helping an international church partner stand up their own story ministry and building a bridge across the tech in the tech stack stories flow awesome yeah and and i signed up for this recently because um i wanted to do better storytelling locally where i am in portland and i know a lot of us uh what we're doing in media to movements a lot of times is we're trying to actually uh do storytelling of maybe people who are local believers uh, or who have had a conversion experience from one faith to another. So I think this is um, gonna be a really cool idea for us to kind of figure out what that looks like, um, you know, especially in places where, you know, I've only got like a closet, what can I do with that? Or, um, you know, like you showed me a prayer chapel video, which is really cool to see. And I've just got a little basement studio, like how can this look? Does it have to have a lot of high cost behind it? No, it doesn't. So. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, I think Zach just joined us. Zach, are you here? Can you unmute yourself? He might still be. Hi, everyone. Hey, hey. can't see you. Um, oh, I can see myself. <laughs> there we go. Okay, here's here's Zach. Um, Zach, tell us about Reliant Creative and how you hooked up with Todd. We just watched his video and he just shared a little bit about Story Drive and uh, what you would like to see globally for like content creators. Okay, um, so Reliant Creative is a full service creative creative agency, digital agency for Christian ministries. So I've been doing that for the last 10 years, helping ministries build brands and websites and tell photo video stories. Um, so I've been in this space for a little bit. And uh, over the last couple of years, um, pre-COVID, like early 2020, felt like the Lord was moving us in a, a bit of a new strategy or at least an additional strategy um, to help ministry national partners be capable storytellers. And the original idea was, was centered around um, donor-centric communication. How, how can we get ministries here in the States communicating with their donor bases more often with greater regularity, um, not relying so much on those silver bullet films that uh, most ministries rely on for their, their galas and their big fundraising campaigns. How can we be telling the stories of how God's moving and rescuing and redeeming um, more often with greater, greater regularity? I think that we see, at least I have seen, this huge gap between how often God is moving and rescuing and redeeming and transforming life and how often the church is testifying of that work. And so man, if we could close that gap, what would that look like for the church? And so um, the original idea was to see if we could raise up ministry national partners in country, the people that are on the ground, especially in unreached, unengaged people group locations, 
watching God work firsthand. We've all got devices in our pockets that are capable of helping tell, helping us tell these stories. And could that be a, um, a funnel to, to telling those stories and pushing that content back to ministry headquarters here in the States. And so that was the idea. We set out to build a bunch of courses and uh, train on all the things that we offered as an agency. So um, if you go to our site, there's courses, free courses on brand, uh, photography, storytelling, documentary storytelling, script writing, uh, web design from a story script framework. Um, and that was a good starting point, I think. Um, it led me to meet Todd, who you guys sounds like you already met. Um, and we just started ideating and dreaming and vision casting on what it could look like to um, really help the church end story poverty. I think that the church is, at least in the West, in this um, a stage where we're, we're just not telling stories. We're not testifying of what God has done. Um, and man, I see throughout scripture how we're called to do so over and over and over again. And so that's kind of where we're at. We're headed in a new direction a bit for, for my ministry, at least. Um, we'll still continue to keep the agency as that agency model, but um, I'm excited to see where the Lord's taking us with this new idea. So thank you, Zach. Hopefully that summarizes everything. Yeah. <laughs> roughly, I guess. That's great. Yes. And um, I just took your course on um, story driven like content creation for social media for nonprofits and stuff. And so it's really shifting my focus uh, and I'm really excited about implementing some of those things. And it was only, awesome. it was free. I didn't have to pay anything. Um, yeah. So thanks for that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I added your email in there, uh, but feel free to add some different information about uh, Reliant Creative if you want in the chat window. And uh, okay. yeah, we're saving all this too. So we can look at each other's info later. And um, I wanted to introduce uh, Yi Yi Zapata, who is in Florida, and she is going to be speaking to us today about um, CV resources, uh, which is something that um, I have been on that mailing list for a little while now, getting some emails about their resources. And a lot of people don't know about these guys. Uh, so Yi Yi, welcome. Um, sorry about your troubles the last uh, day or two. Um, we're going to turn it over to you and let us know what's going on in your life and, and what, how did you get connected with CV Resources? Thank you very much, Tim. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Gigi Zapata. I'm from Colombia, and I work in the, uh, in my, in the Miami area from, for this amazing nonprofit organization called CV, Christian Vision, globally. And we provide the content uh, for Latin America specifically, but we also have different offices and create content in different languages to actually reach them, the vast majority of people that the, don't know Jesus yet and connect them with him and turn them into disciples. So CV Resources plays a very good and a very key actually part of all this process. Why? Um, it is a free library of quality downloadable videos, um, Christian videos that actually you're going to receive through a newsletter you're going to receive them if you uh, subscribe to the page, register to the web page. It's completely free too. Um, they're easy to navigate, searchable. The video library, you can find categories, titles, um, specific topics. You can find content for different ages, different, different situations, backgrounds. We have some things on, for example, going through or from addiction all the way through salvation, um, finances, trainings, um, everything in one step for evangelism. So people, churches, ministries, leaders, everyone can actually register and be part of it and can download the content and use it in different type of uh, situations, organizations with the, the sole pur purpose of preaching the gospel and reaching people for Jesus. In different genres and different type of content, we can have like small capsules with um, a very small teaching on stewardship, for example, and then we can have a big production on abortion and we have animated videos in 3D talking about brokenness and all of those are made with the intention of people having a place where they can go grab the content and use it however they prefer, 
however it, it can be helping them to re, um, proclaim the gospel in their social media, even in their small groups of church at home, uh, through Zoom conferences and, and meetings. So the idea behind that is weekly showcase um, our very best downloadable video. So for example, if you're in the United States, you can go to a web page, select English, and uh, automatically you're going to be able to see the entire library and look for topics and, and genres, and you're going to be able to find content that can match the purpose that you're looking for. At the same time, it works in Spanish, Portuguese, Russian. We have an extensive library of content. And the good thing about that is that the collections are curated by our per, like our own team of storytellers and videographers and creators in-house and other people that we have had working with us. Um, for example, partnerships that we have had with other organizations that proclaim the gospel of Jesus and also people that are like outsourcing companies um, that they have like different content creators, videographers, DPs, um, they have helped us storytelling, writing, creating from scratch, different topics and videos that can fulfill a different need in different regions. Because one of the things that we have noticed the, noticed the most, and this is a very good example, is that we created uh, Russia, like our office in Ukraine or that sector, um, they created a video called Actually Broken. And it was a 3D animation, was really good. This team of people from Argentina, actually, they used to work with Pixar, Disney, um, and other companies creating 3D animations. And they created this video, beautiful video, beautiful backstory in a way that was actually very captivating. But we localized it here in Latin America or for Latin America. And the video in less than two years or in two years has already more than 21 million views. And the engagement is incredible. So one of the things that we saw is that looking forward and looking more into the topic, we noticed that actually uh, in Latin America, that's a huge thing that people are looking for, how to heal their brokenness, how to heal from uh, loneliness, how to heal from a broken heart, from a broken home, from a broken relationship. And it was not saying that around the world is not a common topic, but practically in Latin America at that same time was a high on that type of uh, search and online concepts to actually answer that need. So what we need, what we do is that we actually share back and forth with other regions the content that we're creating, uploading it to CV resources. So in that, in that, um, in that same line, they can actually localize the content for the region depending on the topics that they I, they are actually noticing that it's a need to be answered in their own countries, in their own regions. So that's something that we have been implementing a lot in CV resources. We're working on making it even better where we might have in the future podcasts, audios, articles based on those videos. So people can actually have everything to create, maybe a teaching, maybe a training course. We're going to have videos, for example, teaching how to talk in church about relationships, love, sex, having different perspectives of different pastors, leaders, people that actually work with couples um, that are therapists and that at the same time are pastors, leaders. So that's the way that we're trying to move forward with CV resources where they can have everything. But one of the topics that, or one of the things that I um, appreciated that team sent was what needs you might have, because it sounds like we have it all. We don't. We don't have it all. So I actually like when I'm asked, okay, what do you need? We need more content with a variety of styles, not only the genre, it's more like a style. Because for example, back in, in Latin America, if you guys are familiar with our culture, you're going to be able to notice that we love everything very soap opera. We're very dramatic, very passionate, very scandalous. We like all that. So that type of tone and color and and ways to move like a wave in the story and all that. We love it. As Hispanic people, we love that. But at the same time, we have noticed that a lot of people love the talking head video. It's very simple for them. It's very um, connecting. It's a way that they can actually feel that somebody's talking to them. And we have never expected that. We thought that the storytelling videos were going to be more successful than a talking head. So... We're lacking a little bit of variety of style in that sense. 
And we want to actually be able to partner and create more content with other organizations that, are, that their purpose is actually to reach people and be a one-step place to actually help everyone interested in evangelism, online evangelism, digital evangelism, um, storytelling for evangelism, and even for training on how to do that or achieve that to actually upload the content and have it available for free for everyone that is interested in just you know, sharing the gospel and, and, and help the kingdom to advance. So that, that would be pretty much what we're doing now in Siri Sources. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I've been on the email list, really enjoying seeing what you guys have and just thought, you know, I wonder if we could collaborate further. And so it's great to hear that you're looking for um, other production partners. Um, I'm, I'm noticing as I try to ramp something up for the Yao people of Southeastern Africa, um, even just having things like in an African context, not African-American, but actually African-African, like how can we find things that look like it's in a village, village setting, um, those kinds of things. So we would love to see what we can do to assist you guys, because you already have this big email list and, um, and everything. So uh, thank you. Uh, so you go ahead and put your information in there of how we can get in touch with you and further the conversation. Um, I wanted to ask MK to share a little bit about what he's been doing because um, yeah, he's been pretty busy lately, uh, flying around doing some really cool film um, content creation for Haiti, I believe. Um, MK, go ahead and, and tell us what you're up to and uh, why, why would we be interested in this? I want to make sure, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had switched microphones around right before we started, sorry. Um, uh, I'm with a uh, relatively new production company called Rogue Marble. Um, Rogue Marble was formed in July 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, um, with a mission of partnering with existing Christian ministries and missions organizations to produce uh, indigenous films uh, around the world uh, in, within the culture, within the language. So our uh, premier project um, was shot just this last year in Haiti. Um, the film is in the final stages of post-production and we'll start screening on a uh, grassroots um, level in Haiti next month. So we're pretty excited to see um, that come to fruition. Um, one of the things that kind of uh, evolved uh, as we were shooting the film itself is um, we started working on a behind the scenes series, um, not necessarily knowing exactly what we were planning on doing with it in the beginning. But as, as the, the year went on, um, it, it, was, it uh, expanded into what is now a six 30 minute episode streaming series um, that will be uh, complete post-production uh, in April. Um, and will go into commercial distribution. Um, that series is called X Faith. X F A I T H dot com is the website. Um, and the model that we're generating is because the the projects that Rogue Marble does are at no cost to the ministries and the missions groups. We we bear the cost um, from uh, donors who support what we're doing, and then the behind the scenes series that will go out as a commercial product, which tells all about the making of the film, the development, the story, the people, what life is like in country, the culture. So it's kind of like a behind the scenes slash travel vlog uh, kind of uh, project. Anyway, those will be uh, commercial projects that the, the proceeds of which go back partially to um, the ministry that we partnered with, and then uh, the rest goes back into the production budget to continue to make projects uh, in other locations. So um, I don't know if we'll have time to, to watch something here, but I'll, uh, I have information on this. I'll just paste here in the chat. Um, we, have a, we, have a, we have a trailer um, on our website that you can watch, um, two minute trailer of season one of X Faith. It's all about the making of the film in Haiti this year. Um, for some of you will know, I know Tim does, um, he knows Steve Baldwin. Uh, Steve with Create Mobile is currently in Togo, West Africa, uh, doing um, their project there. And actually part of their team has been contracted to shoot uh, season two of X-Faith around the project that they're doing in Togo right now. 
Um, and then uh, later this year, we will be producing another film um, in Cambodia. We've been a little delayed because Cambodia keeps opening and closing and opening and closing. So um, we're looking at uh, hopefully being able to go and do that in November. Um, and then we'll be shooting another season of X Faith around that. And so would love it if you guys could take a look at the trailer um, and provide any kind of feedback um, uh, that you have, uh, because we want to make, make this a product that is not only uh, talks about our project, but something that is valuable to others, uh, not only from a filmmaking standpoint, but from an intercultural study standpoint, um, and hopefully to be something that um, motivates and encourages others to be doing the same kind of things, which I know some of you are, and that's amazing. And that's why I wanted to be here today because it's not, not, not a large group of people out doing these type of projects. Um, and so it's great to be able to connect with others that are, and maybe we could be resources to one another or sounding boards for one another or, or whatever. Sometimes if we're going into a certain country to do a project, Maybe some of you are from that country or you have, or you have people in that country that we can connect with and vice versa. So um, uh, earlier in the chat, I put uh, you know, uh, our Rogue Marble website in my email. Feel free to contact me there. Um, the X Faith series um, um, uh, you know, has, a contact, uh, has a contact page on that website as well. So that's a, that's a subdivision of Rogue Marble. And uh, anyway. That's, that's pretty much it. Thank you, MK. Yeah, I've been following your progress and enjoying watching um, some of the behind the scenes and everything too. So it's great to see what you guys are up to. Uh, do we have any M2M, M you know, Media to Movements practitioners here today? I'd ask somebody or a couple of people to come, but I don't know if I saw them. Lauren, are you here? Okay, so we might be heavy on the content production side, which is fine. Um, last, last time we actually had a couple of teams speak to us about some of the things that are the most helpful types of resources. Um, Ed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you actually to tell us what you have seen are some types of content um, that have been good for the Berber speakers where you're working. What kinds of things do they like? Um, and are you talking like high production, high cost kinds of things, or is are these simple enough things like memes, graphics? Um, how what's your experience been like? Hi, uh, thanks, Tim. Um, well, working in a variety of ways. Uh, one is that uh, making low cost, street level, ground up uh, type of videos that are uh, for Berbers that are um, um, that have content that are really relevant to them. Rather than uh, going with a, a, a heavy apologetics approach, which a lot of people do and, and actually do well and, and it's necessary, uh, we start with the, uh, I'll just give you an example that uh, for the uh, few years, um, a couple of years just before we left Morocco uh, for the States, uh, that I was uh, involved in what I say in uh, women's ministry um, with my wife, uh, who is really connecting with Berber women uh, who were, um, and so what I was doing is uh, made, adapting one story, the one story uh, series, uh, perhaps some of you are familiar with that, uh, especially some of the uh, Old Testament uh, uh, passages, um, especially the, uh, like with uh, uh, David's encounter with Bathsheba. Um, the, the one story things were based upon shame, uh, overcoming shame. And uh, so that the really, uh, so it did it like a, a slideshow of screenshots from uh, like the history channels, uh, uh, you know, the Bible uh, series with uh, David and Bathsheba. And the, the content was uh, pretty much straight scripture in Berber, but, you know, edited. Uh, it was very, very effective because it really, um, we concentrated on how then um, how powerful men abuse women, and it really struck a nerve with the Berber women. Uh, how visceral the response was uh, in, in, a, in a very good way, in a very healing way. Um, so that was um, very much ground up and very localized um, 
and I wouldn't say that it would be necessarily adaptable to a whole lot of other situations. Well, I, I did a Moroccan Arabic version of it as, as well, but uh, which again, too, is still the same Moroccan context. Um, uh, right now, though, it's uh, taking a very di different tact, uh, translating Psalms into Berber, and uh, the, the, the Psalms, the, they're uh, really heart-rending prayers, uh, many of them to God, and, uh, and also exaltations of praise. So uh, translating those now into the Berber language, a new translation, uh, because the, uh, the one that we were editing of the whole Bible done by the nationals, they're very good, but it uh, didn't reach the audience, didn't have the persona that we're really looking for. Um, but uh, for right now that I'm translating, not just translating the Psalms, but also writing screenplays and soundscapes to accompany, to film all 150 Psalms in Morocco uh, that would then not only be good for a, Moro a, a Moroccan um, a Berber audience, uh, but also could be adapted globally to any audio version, a translation uh, of scripture uh, of Psalms, uh, then could be customizable, have a cu highly customizable kind of a Lumo for Psalms, um, but in a more highly customizable way. So, uh, so that would be a very big production um, to uh, so that you asked uh, Tim earlier. So, uh, is it like low cost or the high end? Uh, well, no, kind of both. Um, so it's frankly scaring me to death, but I think it's something that is uh, gaining traction, real calling from my own life. You've been a pioneer in this, so it's it's great to see how you are taking not having a high tech media production background, um, but just doing what you can and collaborating well and just being really creative. So. Um, yeah, I think that's Fine. great what you're doing. And then put your email in there so people can get in touch with you. Uh, sure. Yeah, and then I wanted to ask uh, Mark to share a little bit about his experience in Media to Movements. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, yeah, happy to share a little bit. We spent uh, a little over 12 years in North India as a family and got into using media as part of our church planning strategies, uh, probably seven or eight years into that uh, stint there. And we were highly focused with our uh, media uh, strategy, I guess, really focusing on like a one pin code, a, a, a small uh, postal uh, zip code area of our city. And uh, because there was already multiple millions of people living in that small area in our city. so. The, the sheer scale of India, I think, is something that was interesting in figuring out how to uh, not only you know, put the content out there and use the strategy, but you know, having the follow-up network and the, the coalition, basically, to be able to deal with the sheer numbers of people is important. And so we know we had, a, we had limited resources of people who could actually follow up on the ground. So we wanted to limit our uh, you know, audience, basically. And we had a very specific uh, persona and personas that we were targeting within that uh, group as well. So, um, you know, that was, we used a variety of different things uh, through, you know, just simple small posts, primarily through Facebook. Uh, WhatsApp was also a part of that strategy. Uh, we did a partnership with uh, the Jesus Films Next Steps uh, initiative and did some things with them. And uh, we, interestingly, I, I mean, I found my, one of the interesting things working in that context, I think, was uh, questions that I had about cognition. Basically, what we observed among the population that we were focused on is that it had a high level of consumption. People were consuming media at a very rapid rate, but the engagement and uh, ability to contribute or translate what they were seeing into how that relates to real life and what to do with it uh, was an interesting hurdle to try to get over. And so there were linguistic issues dealing with uh, multiple different languages there, uh, yeah, Hindi and other regional uh, dialects and languages, as well as English and how people, I mean, the reality is there were millions of people in North India who were uh, accessing the internet for the very first time with a mobile phone and uh, the, the process of uh, actually typing things into a 
phone to be able to respond uh, to campaigns and things that we use was a brand new activity for uh, many of our audience. And so we had to figure out ways for people to respond basically in non-literate ways. And so that was a unique challenge uh, in that area. And to be honest, I don't know if we ever found a solution. Uh, it's worth experimenting and figuring out some new things there. And I'm actually, uh, tomorrow, we're starting a, a kicking off a brand new team to uh, kind of restart some of these uh, media strategies there and rethink some ways that we can effectively use media to do it. So as far as content is concerned, there's all kinds of, I mean, I love hearing about, there's no lack of potential content that can be posted, can be repurposed, that you know, people are making available, whether that's animated things or um, you know, whatever. But uh, you know, finding things that will enable our particular audience to interact and will lead to face-to-face -face meetings, meaningful conversations, uh, I think is the, the biggest trick and, and thing that we're trying to deal with. So um, yeah, so I'm based in the United States now and uh, have been a part of some uh, film projects here. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about us and what we're doing. Thanks, Mark. Are you willing to share your contact details if you have not already? So that we Yes, can absolutely. Yeah, I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, I just, I, I get you. Like when people are just accessing internet for the first time, you know, they're not going to be savvy with filling out forms and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, do you just put in a WhatsApp number or something where they can leave your voice message? Um, what does that look like? Um, so, yeah, good thoughts and comments there. Um, let's go ahead and open it up now to our group. There might be some of us that are just eager to share something that is happening in your life with ministry um, or have a, a burning question. So uh, we'll spend a few moments uh, to hear from the community here. You can just unmute and start speaking. Hey, Tim, you, you mentioned or asked if there was anybody doing, you know, a practitioner, MCM practitioner. I'd have to say not exactly. Um, I am involved in a media outreach to our beloved second country. Um, and I've been trying to take steps towards making it more media to movements kind of um, thinking and, and an outcome, but it's a step-by-step step -step process. One of the things that we found that people really respond to is when uh, it has to do with the local culture. So I think that I, uh, in, in our context, Ed, Ed's, Ed's as well, um, you know, the people are, you know, kind of stifled by the overarching, <clears throat> you know, national identity. So anything that speaks to their, you know, them specifically, they, I, we, we've been told by a group that helps MTM work happen that we're getting the, the most responses out of anybody in the, it, that they, that they're working with hundreds of people, I think. So uh, speaking to, to a people that don't, that their language doesn't get and their culture, you know, anything that shows off their culture. Um, I think that that's a huge thing to, uh, weave into, you know, not just importing media that that's like Egyptian. Okay. That's great. But, and popular, but, uh, how to, how to, bring that in to like Ed kind of does with the image or, uh, you know, where, where it comes in and you say, oh, that's really local. I think that really connects to, uh, to a people that, that does feel kind of, you know, underneath an overarching thing. And what, what's for us here, it's such an opportunity to be gospel centric to, to say your, you know, your little group here of people are just as valuable as the English speaking community in the world or anywhere else. So. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Yeah, people want to feel seen and heard and they get so excited uh, when they recognize something that's theirs. Um, and you know, when I think I kept thinking in the past that, oh, it's even got to be someone that looks just like them, sounds just like them. But then I realized, no, that's not always the case because things are like my daughter went viral because um, she speaks Chiao and she's a white girl. And um, some guy came to my house. He was from Malawi and he filmed my daughter saying hi and Chiao and going off and rattling in perfect Chiao. And he sent that to his mom in Blantyre, Malawi. 
And before you knew it, we had like five or six friends from the village that were like, hey, Mika's gone viral. Um, so just like recognizing that there are also ways that you can be creative and people just love to see, you know, even a foreigner speaking their local language just blows their mind, especially in these places where they don't have a lot of anyone that cares about their language. Um, so yeah, um, good. Any other questions or comments? That was good, JS. JP, um, are you able to tell us a little bit about EMDC and you've got a, a little community of practice going for mobilizers? Or if anyone else was on that, Hannah, were you part of that at all? Uh, that will be Joshua. Joshua. Okay, is that coming up or did it already happen? Oh, there he is, okay. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, you were asking for Yes, uh, so I was wondering about the community of practice or the thing you're doing at EMDC for mobilizers. Uh, what does that look like? Have you already had that or is that coming up? Uh, it's still coming up. It will be coming up on February 22nd and on March. I'm not sure the March date. I'm going to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to uh, say something about that. So, yeah, I'm Joshua. I am with Ablaze Media Productions. Our focus in media productions here is, I'm, I'm Malaysian, I'm based in Southeast Asia. So the focus of our media production work is that we want to produce videos to create awareness among the churches to get involved in reaching the unreached. Because as we can see, like in this call, most of you are from the West, but we are trying to awake the Eastern church over here among the 1040 window to reach our own people. So most of the work that we do is we try to create content to our content, uh, the, the content that we produce are not targeted to enrich people groups or to evangelize, but the content we produce seeks to create awareness within the church to respond, to bring the gospel to the unrich. So we are trying to gather a group of media producers that are willing to produce content, even uh, content for MT, uh, the media to movements, like to recruit more practitioners that could come from the, from among the unrich people group to reach the unrich. So we believe the Asians could reach Asia. So that's the heart and the goal behind uh, media mobilization, where we want to seek to produce content that could uh, show the reality over here to wake the church and say there is a need out there. So yeah, so there will be two upcoming, uh, for those who are on EMDC, I have two upcoming uh, things that I'll be sharing. There'll be a vision casting that is going to happen on February 22nd. I'm not sure what is the time for Eastern time or Pacific time for the States. But for those on EMDC, you can go to emdc.online and check it out. I'm going to drop the link into, yeah. But, uh, thanks, Kim, for dropping that in. And the other one will be on March 29th. That will be an affinity group where you want to seek um, uh, to draw in the media producers who have the heart to produce mobilization content. So on March 22nd, that's more or less a vision casting thing. And then on March 29, we want to draw in producers that says that uh, more than just producing evangelistic or discipleship content, we want, to, we want to produce content for the church so that the church will be involved with what we do. Yeah, so that's basically about it. Excellent, thanks. Clyde, it, over to you, anything else? You're muted. Uh, is Amos still here? I thought, Amos, can you um, just give us a quick shout out about how you are training people in media in your context. I think it's very interesting. You're unmuted. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm happy to meet you. We can hear you. I'm um, Emos. I'm currently located in the, okay, I'm currently located in the northern side of the Gambia. Here in the Gambia, there's no any media ministry in the Gambia creating indigenous resources. So I moved to Gambia in 2013. So it was in 2017, by the grace of God, that we started creating resource translations in the Gambia languages because we don't have much. The Gambia is 90% Muslims. Mm -hmm. And then the major languages, we have Wolof, Madinka, and Fula. Those are the major tribes here in the Gambia. So when I discovered there's no much indigenous film ministry in Gambia, that was when we started translations. And then we started shooting indigenous film in Gambia languages. 
So the Lord allows us to start. So there's no, most of the people here, they don't have much training. So we received the power to start training people. So I started the training people online, WhatsApp, because here in Africa, the internet connection is somehow slowed down. So started training people currently have trained more than 260 people across 20 countries. And most of them, they are mission leaders, missionary pastors on how to use media in their ministry, how to use social media to reach out to people and some other things that can benefit them in reaching out to people. Not only that, not only training, I train people also on website design, videography, and how to use images and some other things to reach out to people. So I'm the founder of Aldao Broadcast and then Alikama Media. So we have been creating resources. Thank God, presently I have like 60 translators online from different countries. I was able to use social Facebook to get many translators online. So when there's need to translate some things, I just contact them. So they are the one translating in their countries, send it to me. So that is what I'm using to create indigenous Bible, animated Bible stories. We have some animated Bible stories. So just to translate it in their language, Jesus. So we make the work very easier. So they translate to the audio in their country, send it back. So I now use it to create animated Bible stories in their language. So we have social that, media ministry reaching to people. Is that mostly West African countries that you're you have all these translators for? Yes, yes. I just created a request on Facebook requesting for volunteer for translators. And then within three weeks, like 80 people apply that they are ready to volunteer translating Bible stories in recording it in their own local languages. So after interview, I was able to got 60 of them. So they started translating from Tanzania, Malawi, Sudan, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Ghana, and some other countries like that. So we have so many translators from there. They decided to volunteer translating in their languages. Wonderful. Okay, thanks for sharing. So Amos, can you add idea. your your email information in there or WhatsApp so we can uh, correspond with you? I, I need some help as well, probably for Malawi. So that would be great. Okay, no problem. Thank you, brother. Yeah, we need more of you doing this kind of thing in places that are more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, I love this. This is great. Um, we only have a few minutes left, guys. Five minutes left until the end of the hour, the top of the hour. And then we will have the after party where we'll break out the coffee and tea and start dancing a little bit. Um, and you can stay on for that if you'd like. Um, I might take off my jacket. So anyway, uh, any other questions or comments? Well, here, I'll just I'll just say, hey, because uh, Tim or Ted asked me, um, I believe in order for you to save the chat before the meeting is ended at the bottom of your chat box, there's the three dots and you have to click on that and then hit save chat and then it will it should save to your desktop once you leave the meeting. Um, since there's a ton of resources in there and we will be making a summary available, hopefully in the next day or so. Um, with the recording and we try to curate the notes and the links that um, you've been sharing. And if it's okay, we also like to put your name in the little summary um, so others can, you know, see who was here and, and reach out to you. Although, what do we do in the past, Kim? I can't remember. Maybe we don't put contact information in there. We just put web links, I guess, is what we do. So they can link to your organization. But if you're in this meeting and you've put your, your email, then you can, of course, reach out to, um, to one another. Yes, and if you would like to speak in a future upcoming, um, you know, I can't figure out how to actually make this focus on me when I'm talking, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, if, if you want to speak in a future upcoming meeting, then let me know uh, so that we can get you going. But um, 
you know, these things are pretty organic. So we are just trying to create a community where we can all come together and hear about different resources we might not know about, hear updates on what people are doing um, and just see how we can collaborate further. Um, but I really wanna hear stories too of how these are helpful because uh, we, we really want this to be useful. We're not gonna spin our wheels. We don't want that to happen. So um, yeah. We still have a three more minutes for further. Yeah, and I'll just say so. Yeah, we we love you guys. I'm just encouraged that you know, love the faces, familiar and new. Um, thanks to especially to Yi and um, gosh Todd and uh, Zach for for joining us today, especially. Um, but yeah, I'm just thrilled. We want to build bridges, make connections. We want the water level to rise and the kingdom to come. Um, and that often happens as trust relationships are built. So let's just keep at this. So we try to meet on a quarterly basis. We'll let you know when the next one will happen. Great. And um, yeah, we have been putting resources in the chat. Make sure you look through all of that, especially on if you're not um, familiar with media to movements, how you can learn more about that. Uh, there's several on ramps and communities of practice happening with that. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and officially stop the recording. Um, and